Here we go. 15 times a charm. We made it. <laughs> We're here. We're here. All right, everybody, let's get started. So my name is Jennifer Carroll, and we are here in Philadelphia in the CCC studio. And I am here in with our cooking series with Ryan Turner. It's called Fueled by Spice because we feature my spice of the month. And this month it's tahine. And today we're going to be making shrimp ceviche. So Ryan, over to you. Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and then we're going to get into cooking. Thanks so much. I am a dietitian up here in New York City, taking on parenting and business and all that kind of stuff. But I am here to always help any of my more active individuals and uh, also just kind of keep help keep families healthy. So we're here. We're making it happen. Yeah. All right. So Ryan, we're going to start making the marinade. I have my limes right here. I want to talk about if you can see the skin on the limes are really smooth on my citrus and that means that there's going to be more juice in it as opposed to if it was really like bumpy so if you're looking for juice only you want to try and get citrus that it has a smooth skin and then give it a little roll so it releases as much juice we're going to cut all of our citrus in half first so cut your cut your limes your lemon lemons your oranges and we're gonna juice them off now listen you don't need a fancy little like um what's this juicer but it works if you want you can use a fork or you can just use your strength or if you have a citrus juicer you can use that but this works great and gets out most of it. So we're just gonna start getting our all of the juice in there. And I like to juice into a bowl that has a fine mesh sieve already in it. So it's catching the pulp and the seeds at the same time. So I don't have to do double the work. It's doing it for me. So we're just gonna get all the juice out of it. I'm probably gonna get a little bit more pulp in mine, but that's gonna be okay, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, but it'll be texture. It'll be delicious. I think it'll still be good. This is, if I can just hop in with just a note here, I love this recipe, one, because I think that it's a lot easier than people think. And it's a great way to kind of, uh, people just start eating lighter in general that I usually see. And it's like, just try this at home, if not order at a restaurant. But another thing that I love about this is that I think people kind of forget the benefits of having citrus with some kind of protein. Now, shrimp's not really high in iron, but when we are having higher iron foods, you do get a benefit of ugh, absorbing a little bit more iron that's more bioavailable once the citrus is actually eaten with it. So that's where I love to kind of bring this in and people start to increase vitamin C intake and everything. So we love to make this time of year happen. And I, I like, I love making ceviche um, with any types of like nice like fish and seafood it's really really delicious and it just it tastes so fresh and yeah having that extra like vitamin content is really great I didn't know that about everything so I'm getting I'm getting so much juice out and the reason why we're using like three different citruses is because I'm trying to get a balance between the tart and sweet. And typically le limes are a lot more tart compo as opposed to a lemon, which has, even though you might be like, a lemon is not sweet. A lemon is definitely has a little bit more sweetness than lime juice. And they do definitely taste very different. And then of course the oranges, have more sugar content and are a lot sweeter than both the lemon and lime combined. But they all have a good amount of acid in them, which will cook, help cook the protein. Any questions, Bill? I don't know if I see that. Okay. Jen, so, can, can I ask, is it, yes. is it better or worse to have about a quarter of a cup of juice that is now squirted out everywhere is it we have more or less i feel like it's everywhere right now uh, 
Yeah, the, I got I got juice everywhere. I got juice everywhere too. It's uh, it's all it's all good. <laughs> and just because I, I mean, along with that said, I always just love to make sure that people know that I love these recipes because I think that it's really simple, but also I think it invites the family in. If you don't want to use uh, citrus and squeeze it all out, you're definitely fine just to use, and it, it might not be as flavorful because that's what I find. But you can definitely use just, you know, already squeezed lemon juice and orange juice and lime juice. So don't feel as if it's going to be something where this needs to be the heavy lifting aspect of everything. I do have a question. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, C3JB says, what's a good side dish for this? What's a good side dish for this? Yeah. Um, to accompany this dish. To accompany the shrimp ceviche. Yeah. Well. I, I mean, like, I would eat this as, like, a full meal, kind of, but a side dish, probably a salad or a soup could be really great. Even, um, like, a, grill, a grilled chicken could be really delicious or some sort of, like, grilled vegetables to accompany it would be really good. I, I would totally Barbecue do that. chicken. You know, I would, I would, from a nutrition standpoint at least, I know that for myself, I would also have this as just the main part of my meal. Yes. This recipe uses about half of a pound of, uh, of shrimp, which is making it a really high protein meal. Depends what you're going to have with it, whether, and I'm going to, I'm going to share some other things that you can kind of use as like a utensil here. But I think that if you're looking at like a full meal from a nutrition aspect, this recipe could be it for just for an individual, maybe for two, but just make sure that you are thinking about how this could itself be on its own. Yeah, I I agree. Okay, so right now I you can see like my sieve. I'm just pushing on some of the pulp to get out that excess juice, and I'm gonna set it aside with all of my skins. Now I'm gonna taste the balance just so I can tell what the difference is like in all the juices and see if I need to. You know, this could be a time where you are like, okay, I need to add a little bit more sweetness. So if you have an extra citrus around, but. I would have totally forgot to taste it, Jen. That's what I need you here for. <laughs> <laughs> but right, like Ryan, mine is really like, it has that acid, it has that tartness to it. It has the freshness, but it has a lot of sweetness where I'm not tasting this. Like I'm tasting like pure vinegar or pure acid where it's like my mouth is like getting like pulled back. Yeah. I mine mine is definitely a lot more acidic right now, which I like, and I don't know if that's going to change. I would love to know if that's going to change the way that this is actually going to, you know, if it changes the recipe. I know for my kids though, if I'm making it for them, I'm definitely going to go higher on the on the sweetness just for them. But great point. Yeah. Um, no, it's not really. It's not going to change the recipe. It's just the it's just the end of the the flavor. So it's not going to do anything different. So what I have now, we're gonna we're gonna do a dice on our red onion. I just cut it in half and in half again. And then we're going to do the traditional, you know, dicing of an onion. So I'm holding it down. I'm slicing vertically, going down. And then I'm going to cut across horizontally, starting at the top and holding it tight. And I'm looking for a small dice here. So again, I'm gonna slice going down vertically, going about, you know, an eighth to a quarter inch apart from each other, turning it and starting from the top and doing about two to three slices horizontally across. And now that we have that move, we're going to finish and we're going to slice it down to make the final dice on the onion. So that's what you're looking for. Some really nice, beautiful diced onions. I had some extra red onions sitting around, luckily. Is there any issue with using another onion, you think, Jen? Um, no, the red... The the red onion hat is just all about flavor and, uh, and sweetness. So the red onion is a little bit sweeter than 
say like a yellow onion or even a white onion. Yeah. Uh, if this was like trying to be like purely a Mexican dish, you would use white onion, but I like the sweetness of the red onion. You could also use shallot as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take my red onion and I'm gonna I'm not gonna use all of it and I'm going to put in how much does it say? It says a full cup. Yeah, only only half. Just like take a look at the recipe. And I'm putting about half of the onion into my marinade. I can't see the rest of it. I think Ryan said a quarter cup. Okay, yeah, I think it's like a, a quarter cup. That's about half of an onion. And this is going directly into the citrus, right? Into the citrus that we juice. Yep. The lemon, lime, and orange juice. And so what's going to happen here with the red onion, it's going to release its flavors, really start to bring itself into the marinade. But also what the acid is going to do, it's going to pull out some of that rawness and like that heat and like that bitter strongness from the onion. It's going to make it a little bit softer in flavor and almost be a quick pickle. So, you know, how do you make a pickle? You make a pickle with vinegar. <laughs> this and like, it's acid. So that's what we're pretty much doing right here. The next thing that goes into our marinade is going to be a little bit of cilantro. And this is just to like really help flavor that liquid while it's sitting in the uh, fridge waiting. Now, I didn't have any cilantro at the at the store or in my garden, so I pulled out a little mixture of what I know is gonna go well with these flavors. So I'm using some basil, um, a little bit of mint, and some parsley. Now, for the, for the marinade, we're gonna add more in at the end to bring that freshness back and to not have it being like mushy, like herbs or anything like that. I'm going to pick off some of these herbs. I'm going to leave them whole. So I have some parsley, a couple of leaves of my basil, and we're gonna do a couple of leaves of my mint. And what I'm going to do with these to get like some of like the oils coming out is I'm just gonna give them a slap. You see this happen a lot in like bars sometimes. And what it's doing, it's bruising the herbs and allowing it to kind of break down and release its flavors quicker than as I just put it in there. So it's a form of like muddling almost. And then Do we're it. gonna and then we're yeah. gonna add <laughs> perfect. We're gonna add some salt and we're gonna add a little bit uh we're gonna add our extra virgin olive oil as well. Jen, what is what would be too soon to make this? I know I love making it kind of in the moment. But if I wanted to prep it, how long would be too long ahead of time, you think? Um, I would make it day of. I wouldn't, I really would not let it sit in the fridge overnight. Uh, you just, you really want to keep the freshness to it. That's what a ceviche is all about. It's yeah. about it being super fresh and bright. Um, so I would, I would try and do it all same day. So if you're wanting to do it ahead, maybe like you can do it in the morning and have the marinade ready to go. Um, if anything, if you really are look, like looking for, want it to be ahead of time one day at most, because otherwise like fresh citrus starts to turn and, um, it just doesn't taste as good. So now that we have in our onion, our herb, our extra virgin olive oil, our salt, and all three of the citrus, you're gonna give it a taste. And you can taste like a piece of the onion now because I want you to taste the difference, what it's going to taste like in a little bit. You can see how raw it is. And adding the oil and fat to it um, takes away some of that acidity too and that tartness and the astringency because you're adding fat and you're kind of coating your palate with the oil. So we're gonna put this into the fridge to chill down and just get nice and cold. And while we put that in the fridge, we're gonna pull out the shrimp that we just lightly poached about halfway uh, earlier today. So we, clean, we cleaned our shrimp and what does that mean? That means to peel, devein, to peel and devein it and then we are now going to cut them into pieces. So I have my shrimp here, peeled and deveined, cooked, and I'm going to slice them in half, you know, right where I, where, right where I uh, deveined it. So it's almost like 
we're butterflying it, but we're taking it all, we're cutting it all the way through. And if you can see, you know, we did not cook the shrimp 100% through one, uh, so it's well done and cooked all the way. There's a little bit of like grayness here, um, which shows that it's not fully cooked. It's not like opaque. If you're thinking about it as like a steak or a piece of meat, I would say this is cooked medium, medium rare, right? Because what's going to happen is the acid from the marinade is going to finish the cooking of it the rest of the way. Jed, I used um, some smaller shrimp just because it was something that I felt if I didn't have enough time, I could leave it maybe whole. It definitely, I think that I definitely overcooked it a little bit and that usually happens for me. Uh -huh. So if that's the case, I use like, I use 70, 90 shrimp, by the way, you use very big shrimp. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm using, I'm using U10s. Nice. Um, and that means like 10 shrimp per pound. Yeah. What is the, what's the benefit of using the, the larger ones? Is there more flavor? Is there, what's the, what's the thought behind that? No, I just like, you know, I just like the look of it, but I also, I like how it cooks when I'm doing like the pre poach on it. Um, it's really just how you want the final end product to be. I I, brand's really good too. Yeah. And I use um, this brand called Oishi, which is really good shrimp that you can find um, at a reputable fishmonger. And I think they sell it in some grocery stores, but I'm not sure. So now that I have like all my shrimp cut in half, you know, almost like the, like the letter C, uh, we're going to now cut them into uh, smaller pieces. So I'm not going to chop it. I still want it to be big enough for like a nice like bite-sized piece, but I don't want it to be too big. So I'm cutting like each piece probably in about three pieces. And if you want to leave it, and it, this, again, this depends on like the size of your shrimp. So Ryan, if you have it like a smaller size shrimp, you could pop, you could probably just leave it cut in half like we have right now with the C's instead of cutting it down again. I like just having a nice like bite-sized piece. <laughs> and obviously the smaller you cut it, the quicker it will cook in the acid because it ha the acid will then be hitting more surface area and really cooking it quicker. Excellent. Any, any difference between wild and farm caught, Jen? Um, well, it depends on where, where it's coming from. Uh, the flavor definitely will change for sure. Yeah. I, I, I am more of a proponent of wild shrimp, but this, uh, this shrimp is a farmed shrimp, but you have to look at exactly like the practices that the company is doing behind it and see where, like the waters that it's swimming in. Is it cold water? Is it hot water? Um, what part of the world is it coming from? Because we in America truly like import most of our shrimp. For sure. Yeah. Um, so now that I have, have all my shrimp cut, cooked down, down. I'm going to put my, add my shrimp to the marinade and we're going to throw that back in the fridge to uh, marinate <laughs> and to cook the rest of the way. Okay. And so I'm going, everything is in the juice. I'm going to give it I'm going to push it down so it is all fully submerged. And the flavor of the herbs and the onion and the juice, the citruses are all going to start to get into the shrimp and really start to flavor it and take the cooking process the rest of the way. We want to put this back into the fridge to just continue to chill, right? You don't want to, you don't want to leave it out because it's seafood. <laughs> the next thing that we're going to do, wipe off my board and my knife, is we're going to cut up the cucumber, avocado, and cherry tomatoes, which is going to be part of the salad. This 
is what I love about this recipe is again that it's easier than we think. It might feel time consuming, but when we're definitely trying to get more of these colors, these antioxidants in here, the fiber, this is where we start to make the biggest difference, which I love. Now I already pre-cut some of mine, Jen. Don't Great. Me. No, good, 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 good. <laughs> All right, so I have my cucumber. I'm using an English cucumber. I already had it washed, and I'm going to cut it into pieces that I find a little bit more manageable. So this one is really large. I cut it into three pieces, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a peel. I leave a little bit of the skin on. Now, Ryan, what, how do you feel about like the skin of the cucumber? Do you think it has, is beneficial to leave it on for nutrients or to take it off? 100% it's going to have more nutrients, but if the difference between you and your health is going to be the skin of a cucumber, I think we have larger things to deal with. Um, so go with what you really want. I feel like especially because I'm always thinking about my kids, I cut things down here even a little bit smaller for their little mouths. Uh, and I want to make sure that they're going to be happy with that. But um, yeah, go skin on, skin off. There's so many great vegetables within this already. Don't make, don't, it's not, it definitely isn't a make or break thing. Okay, now, now I'm going to cut my cucumbers in half lengthwise. I'm going to scoop out some of the seeds. And I'm just using the tip of my spoon and we're taking the seeds out. Now I, I take the seeds out because they tend to be a little bit like more watery and don't have much flavor to them. If I can, I would love to just remind people too, at this, at this point, start thinking about ways that you're going to eat this. Obviously, you can do it with a spoon, but it's not as fun. Eating something like this, like the ceviche, using some kind of uh, tortilla chip is obviously possible. But start thinking about maybe getting some sort of uh, other kind of chip in there. And a cucumber, as you have this, get extra cucumber. Cut slices from it, because that can definitely be a way, just another vehicle to eat this, eat this dish. And I'm going to show you another one that I know my kids love. It'll be a surprise. Maybe not too crazy, but you'll see it. <laughs> All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be slicing down and making like very long rectangles and we're going to, I'll show you. So we're doing like nice, like long, like sticks. And I can tell I probably only need about half of this cucumber. It's a pretty large cucumber. So I'm going to continue going across to get my batons of cucumber. And depending on how big or small you want it, I like to do it so it's all like bite-sized pieces. And then I'm going to take them and make them into, try and get them all into the same size, like matchstick almost. And then we're going to slice them across to get our dice what's what's the biggest issue with leaving the seeds in there you think jen just the overall texture uh, uh, i think the texture but also seeds are pretty hard to break down um they also you know give extra like water content instead of flavor uh there's you know I, that that's why we take them out it's just not you're not really eating anything except for the seed which doesn't and the, the seeds are also a little bit more like bitter too i hear you hey ryan um somebody was asking about tempeh chips wow what if... i've never made tempeh chips myself but another way to add some protein in there for sure right uh, I think one thing too is, are you cooking your own or are you already getting them somewhere? If someone knows about where to get tempeh chips, my goodness, that'd be great. But yeah, you can definitely make your own if you want to. Very cool. And they, all, they were also asking, uh, would this recipe itself be good for like snapper? Yes. You could absolutely use this recipe with snapper, with black bass, um, 
with striped bass, anything that you want to use to make a ceviche with, you could you could do it with. All right, so I have my cucumbers diced. I'm going to put it, them into a larger bowl so we can see a good like mixing. I'm gonna add my cucumbers. So I'm gonna dump everything from the other bowl into here. So I got my cucumbers. Next, we're gonna add in our cherry tomatoes. Now I have uh, some multicolored cherry tomatoes. Now the easiest way, yes, you can cut a tomato right in half and you can do it one by one, or you can do it the way that we in the restaurant do it is we take our deli lids that we have a thousand of <laughs> and we line up the cherry tomatoes on another deli lid, put this on top, and Bill, get in here so everybody can see this angle. And we're going, to, and we're going to hold it down. And we're just going to cut across. <laughs> if your knife is super sharp, which this knife is not, <laughs> and then you get your tomatoes all cut in half. Jen, you're never short of amazing tips. <laughs> so you get like one move to get them all cut in half. And yeah, that just shows that I need to shop for my knife. <laughs> All right. And so we're going to take the tomatoes. We're going to dump them into our cucumber bowl. <laughs> Next, we have the avocado. We're going to cut it in half. I take the, the end, I take the ends off of my avocado before I take the pit out. And now from here, instead of using my knife to get the pit out, I just take the my the back of my thumbs and I hold it and I pop the pit out. Beautiful. What what happens if I have an avocado that's pretty hard right now, Jen? Um it is definitely that it's not ripe then i would say don't use it because it. it's not going it's not going to it's not going to taste good it's going to yeah. taste really starchy um and not ready so you could you could do this dish without the avocado yeah i think so too i grabbed little tiny ones that i found that were a little bit more ready to go but i'm going to add a little bit more in here because this is where i love to sneak fiber into a lot of meals people think it's just for the healthy fat but there's so much fiber in these so that's where we, we always get it in hey brian uh i just got some info about the tempeh chips yep. i was told that lady wong makes really good tempeh chips oh beautiful and where can uh, do they mention where you can find them i'll, I'll definitely take a look they say that they usually make their own, but they are my go-to for buying. I don't know exactly where, but they'll tell me in a sec, I think. Have you guys made them before? I have. He says he did, but no. we have never made it. I would I would like to, though. That's interesting, yeah. Amazon. Of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, I was going to say that, too. <laughs> All right, so I took the skin off my avocado. And there's just like a little bit of like a little bit of residue of the skin on the top. So I'm just going to gently like scrape it off. Okay. Little trims. And then we're going to dice it and add it to our other vegetables. Or fruit, I guess tomatoes are fruit. Fruit and vegetables. Citrus works the same way to keep it from browning. Something like the avocado. Yep. Just like you would with an apple. Yeah. Yep. Which I'm going to say while you're cutting there, Jen, that's what I definitely love to pull in as like a chip to kind of dip this in because it's nice and sweet. And so if we can kind of use these like apple chips and kind of dip it, I'll show you at the end. But my girls love to have apples with uh, lime on top of them. Ooh. And so. Think about how, like, don't just give in to just the tortilla chip. Like, think of different ways. And it's not just for a healthy kind of thing, but it gives different textures, flavors, and keeps this interesting. So now we have, like, three different ways to eat it. It's like, it's like three different meals. 
I love that. I love like the apple chip and the lime. All right, so we have everything in here. The only thing that needs to go in is our herbs. Now, right, I have I have a couple different types of herbs, but cilantro is definitely the way to go. Sure. Always think of herbs as another way to actually make things like salads, like what Jen has over there. Think about how this can be better for uh, just digestion and everything else from a fiber standpoint, from even like medicinally, we can use these type of things as like the base of a salad. People don't utilize herbs enough. Keep thinking about it. Very true. And herbs just literally can change a dish and take it from being kind of blah and mundane to bright and fresh and obviously like herbaceous but it really brings some dishes to life oh, and when you don't have them i mean i can feel it when a dish needs herbs i love putting herbs in pretty much all my dishes i'm just doing a you know a rough chop on all of these Jen, as you do that, something like the uh, the tagine, where is yep. the tagine, like why is tagine so great with this dish, do you think? So I, in my, in my, in my tagine, I use uh, three different types of chilies. I'm using some guajillos, arbols, and pasillas, and they all have different flavors, but they all work really well with this dish, with the tomatoes, with the onions, with the avocado, with the cucumber, with the herbs. These are like classical Mexican flavors that we're, that we're using. So that's why it works so great with it. Now in my tahini, as opposed to the one that you get in the store, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of tahini right now. I'm not gonna put in too much because mine has a kick to it. Mine is a little bit spicier than the one that you'll buy on the shelves and mine also has both lemon and lime powder again to bring in some of that sweetness from the lemon and mine is doesn't have any caking agents or salt to it it is just pure uh chilies and citrus so now it punch in the mouth it's delicious all right i'm gonna put a little bit of salt into into my vegetables and I have my shrimp and my juice. Um, we're just gonna pour it all right into this big bowl. And we're gonna give it a nice toss. Let's switch these bowls up. But now like it looks so beautiful it has the herbs in there the onions the tomatoes you can see everything you'll be able to taste everything nothing is too small but nothing is too big where it you won't be able to get everything onto one chip i was just looking at it looks I somewhat love. similar jen i think i did it it looks so great <laughs> looking good So this, is, so this is our shrimp ceviche. Ryan, ours looks the same. Yay. I did it. <laughs> but you can either like serve it in a, in a large bowl. You can do like a single serving because there's definitely a little bit more for everybody. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take out some of, of this. I'm gonna put it into a bowl where I, I can go sit outside, read a book, and enjoy my shrimp ceviche. I want to get some of that juice in here because that is where all the flavor is going to be. I love get using that shrimp up cups, there. One cup. I love using these guys because the kids love to just use these. So opt for that if you can, guys. And then I like to, I like to garnish with a touch more of the tahini spice on top and if you if you have some extra lemon you can do a little or lime or orange if whatever citrus you have you can add a little more zest on top and there you have it you know i got a big old bag of tortillas 
chips that I'm gonna uh, that I'm gonna eat mine with. I like that idea. And here's mine, where I'm gonna give it a little platter. So nice. Cucumbers, apples. We got our chips. Of course, you need your chips in there. So this is <laughs> the guy. Yeah. All right. Let's uh let's pose for a picture. Uh, how's that feel? <laughs> Looks good on my end. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Did we hit? Uh, did we hit everything? Well, Chef John wants to know if you can use pita chips. Of course, you can use pita chips. And then I have a question about uh, if you have any leftover shrimp. Like, what happens when you have any extra shrimp? And I guess how long is it good for versus like, does it get overcooked or mushy? So I would. I would not really, I would not let this sit for hours and hours on end because the shrimp is just going to continue cooking as it sits in the citrus. So this is a dish that you really, if you're trying to make it ahead of time, that you're going to add the shrimp in at the last minute, right? Right before you're looking to serve it. And that, and that's it. You're not going to let it sit. If it sits for like three, four hours, mm. it's going to get overcooked and it's going to become mushy and get like a really weird texture to it. So you really, this is really like one of those like last minute dishes where you prep everything ahead of time and then add in the shrimp. And then <clears throat> do you have to use lemon, lime and orange juice or can you use like some other citruses? So you don't have to use all three. You don't have to use lemon, lime and orange, but if you're only using say lemon juice or lime juice, then you definitely want to add something that's going to take in a little bit more of like of sweetness in there to balance it out because you need to have balance when you're making things. So if you have agave or like even like maple syrup, which just to get that sweetness in there is a good is a good um, use instead of using sugar because I know sugar can be the devil. And then Johnny, <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> it definitely can. <laughs> Johnny Ben says looking very nice and he wants to know where you can find the recipe. Johnny, if you go to Jen's uh, link in bio, you're going to see a page like this and it's going to say recipes with a little menu and it'll say fueled by spice. When you click there, it'll take you to all of the recipes that we do live. So you can see the recipe just like that. All right. Uh, uh, one more question. Uh -huh. If I drive real fast, can I go to Philly from here? To, in, <laughs> from. <laughs> From, Mar uh, from, I guess, Maryland in time to help you finish it all off. <laughs> well, whoever is asking that, no, we're done. This is how easy th this is how easy Don't this share. was. Don't share. Don't share. Yeah. It's all for you. <laughs> if you drive real fast and get here, maybe we'll have some left for you to eat. <laughs> All right, everybody. This was another another class called Fueled by Spice with myself and Ryan. I hope you're enjoying the series, and we will be back next month with our seafood boil spice. Enjoy. Delicious. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs>